Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Joe. And you're listening to How Many Fingers Am I Holding Up, the podcast. And today we'll be reviewing Steven Spielberg's Bridge of Spies. Th- th- there was bridges and there was <laughs> spies. <laughs> Not a good one. <laughs> Not great. Welcome to the third episode of How Many Fingers, featuring two guys getting wasted and reviewing movies in a weekly podcast form. This week, we're drinking Goose Island's uh, 300, 100, or 300, <laughs> 300, 312, or 312, 312, or 312, or 312, Urban Pale 31, Ale, 12. and uh, I'm just gonna, ooh, that was a nice uh, open it up. Hey Joe, mm. beer thoughts? <laughs> the beer tharts are the beer tharts are um I don't know this is this is like an is this even considered an IPA I, it's it's not bad it's trying to be because I mean they call it an urban pale ale right so it's obviously playing sort of on that like hoppy flavor mm-hmm. or as they put it the citrus hop aroma and crisp flavor Ooh, hop aroma can stand dull and I know this is Ooh. brewed in Chicago. Chicago. Um, Chicago. And um, I've been drinking this for a while because I was telling Mike I was going to go to his brother's Halloween party. But then I, uh, I, I didn't Got go. Got a little bit of work. And uh, I ended up buying a 24-pack of this, and I've been drinking this all week, and it's been putting me to sleep. It's been some <laughs> <laughs> some real, some real sedation time shit. Sleepy time beers. Yeah. I think it's pretty good. It's not like as strong as like a regular like IPA. It's like a mix between just like a regular ale or a lager and an IPA, I feel can, like. Can I tell you my history about this beer? I would, would love. If the you first time me. I had it was at a One Direction concert. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I had it in a, had it in a, in a fucking 40, 30 ounce can. If that but makes sense. Was that like a stadium or something? Or? Yeah, no, I think it was at the Philadelphia yeah, so Stadium. That makes sense because yeah. Budweiser bought uh, Goose Island. I didn't know that. So like yeah. Goose Island used to be like a craft brewery, and mm-hmm. now Budweiser bought them. So if you go to like a Yankee game or a Mets right. game now, you can find Goose Island. Buying in a can. Which is awesome because it used to just be like Budweiser and Coors Light and stuff at and like I, a game. And now I you can find like an actual like IPA at a, a Yankee yeah. game. And I think this is like their most popular sort of thing mm-hmm. that they do because this is what they had in the can when I went. But anyway, (laughs) (laughs) enough about beer thoughts. (laughs) This week we're reviewing Steven Spielberg's Cold War era thriller Bridge of Spies. And it's a story following American lawyer James Donovan, who's entrusted with negotiating the release of Francis Powers, a pilot whose U-2 spy plane was shot down over the Soviet Union in exchange for Rudolf Abel, a captive Soviet KGB spy held under the custody of none other than the United States. What? That's, that's the plot of the movie that we're about to review. And what what kind of spy plane was that? Was that like a hello, hello? <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful paradise. <laughs> People are gonna fucking hate this podcast. <laughs> My neighbors are gonna hate this podcast. Yeah, they are. Um. Anyway. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's the description. I feel like. The first thought that we've talked about this movie is Steven Spielberg fucking loves World War II. <laughs> he does. I mean, or this, just the World War era in general. But he just loves history. I mean, this is okay. This is following 2012's Lincoln with with Daniel Day Lewis. It was pretty good, and then also 2011's War Horse, which was as like as I like to call it. The Airbud of World War One. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah, it was the Airbud of war movies. <coughs> but um, I think you know this this Cold War story, in line with Lincoln and War Horse, it just proves that you know Steven Spielberg is the type of dad who prefers to spend 
half, you know, all of his time half conscious in front of the History Channel, you know? Or, like, forcing his family into vacations to see Gettysburg for, like, the fifth time. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, the dad whose identity has been completely reduced to the enormous Civil War books you get him for Christmas. Yeah. It's just... Uh, that's that's good old Steve for you. It's good old Steve. I'm sorry if this hits too close to home, Mike. This this is my dad. Too. <laughs> <laughs> these these jokes, uh, it's, yeah. I I know I can see Mike be like, oh, I, shit. I, I've seen Gettysburg more times than I really have ever wanted to see Gettysburg. <laughs> yeah, and and I know, and I mean, I know you've been to Gettysburg, and like I know that wasn't like your mom being like, <sighs> we've had a long week. You know what? Girls Week and Gettysburg. <laughs> no mom in the history of America has ever been like, I think we just need a week in If there's Gettysburg. one thing that will make this year all right, it's just a week at Gettysburg. <laughs> at historic Gettysburg. I think we can all take our mind off of what's been happening lately at Gettysburg. Um, but you... <laughs> have yeah. you ever been to Gettysburg? I haven't. It's great. My it dad, is actually great. Not my, maybe maybe not great for five times as a family vacation, right. but it's all right. My dad's not a history buff, so I mean, I, I know I wrote these jokes, but I, but I, I know like history buff dads, but my dad's not a history buff. Dad. These were these were pretty accurate. Like my dad could have been Steven Spielberg, right? And Steven Spielberg is I picture him as this dad. He's kind of like. Uh, like I can I kind of see him like that half conscious in front of History Channel because no one watches like it's also like it's History like he's Channel. the type of dad that like when he gets drunk he just talks history mm-hmm. he's like trying to like explain like do you understand that like the Battle of Sumter like, right, yeah. what was at stake here <laughs> right or like like trying to like find like a Christmas present for your dad and his identity has literally been reduced to like just like. A Dad. war that he was not a part of, <laughs> was not alive for, has had no ancestors fight yeah. Or, like, Dad, like, I found this thing that could definitely be a textbook for, <laughs> for like, a high school. Do you want this? Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, man. But this was an interesting film. I mean, it starts out... This is the biggest problem that I have with the film, is that... We, Tom, got, we got problems right out the gate. Right, right out of the gate. <laughs> Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks, who plays um, James Donovan, the lawyer, James Donovan, um, in my opinion, right off the bat, has just very little character development. I feel like his character just literally drastically changes. The first time he's on screen, they really paint him as like that unethical, like lawyer stereotype. You, like, like, it, like the first time we see him, he's just like some guy, some poor. Trump is just kind of like, like, like your your client hit five guys on like motorcycles, and um, <clears throat> yeah, they're basically arguing right, right. about like, Don- you know, is this one incident of one guy right. hitting five motorcyclists, is it, or yeah, is it yeah. five separate instances of you know motorcyclists getting hit? And obviously, Tom Hanks, as the insurance lawyer, right. is arguing that no, it was one incident of, you know, one car accident of hitting five motorcyclists. Right. So, I mean, already he's, like, his, kind his, of yeah. questioning his ethics. 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 Right. Yeah, I mean, t- Tom Clanks is a lawyer. Tom Clanks. <laughs> oh, <God>. Tom Clanks. <laughs> Tom walks around and he cranks. Um, Tom Hanks is, a, is, a, is an unethical lawyer. Who's just like comparing like listen to my client and he hit five different guys on a motorcycle. He's like, but why should I pay like five times this amount of money? Like when like are we going to charge like every stick that blows away and like a hurricane in a house or like a tornado in a house? And like he's just kind of this like real like skeezy lawyer. And then they call him in like when he goes to his um, his practice or whatever, and his partners call him in. They're like, listen, you've been um, unanimous unanimously <laughs> voted to be to represent uh this russian kgb spy that's just been caught like it's america we want to give him a fire trial and steve uh tom hanks is just kind of like it's it's kind of like it's kind of almost like he doesn't have a choice kind of thing yeah and he's like and that was that was kind of my first problem with the movie right. was that it was like almost that like tried and true like cliche of like oh like i'm in the end, I'm going to be this like perfect American right. who does exactly what I 
am expected to do as like a hero but like oh i'm gonna like push it away at first and like reject this idea right. of like defending this kgb spy and here's but then once he accepts it it's right. like even though everyone is like completely against him he's just like oh yeah well you know this is what i'm supposed to do and right you know, this is the right american like thing to do to represent our constitution and our, our justice system so 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 here we have like shithead <clears throat> like scum of the earth like real like terrible lawyer First scene, second scene, some, like some powerful terms se- for Tom Clanks. <laughs> second, second scene, he's kind of like already been like, well, I, got, I guess I have to accept this. Like they say, like, well, you know, it's it's an American duty to take this, and he's like, well, fuck, dude, I kind of have to take this. And then he's even at the dinner table, he's like, yeah, you know, I don't know if I've taken it yet. It was just brought to me like a few hours ago. And then his like intern person is like, oh, we took it, right? And like <laughs> that was like the comedic relief of that scene. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the problem that I have is that he went from, you know, unethical lawyer stereotype to like fucking fucking Atticus Finch. Yeah, like... Literally Atticus Finch. I'm protecting this man who nobody wants to see succeed. People, like, give him dirty looks in the subway subway, and stuff. And people People in... People literally shoot bullets at his house. (laughs) People shoot bullets at his house. People in the court are like, hang this man! And Tom Hanks is very, like, no... This is how America works. It, it was the most compelling. I think this was the most compelling part of the film is when Tom Hanks was this part of the lawyer where he was like, no, this is America. We give everybody a fair trial, no matter what they've done. And like, obviously, he has a lot of pressure from his partners, from the, uh, the government and everybody else to be like, just fucking like throw this case, yeah. even though they pitched it to him. As- and it was, I mean... I don't know if it's my biggest problem. That was one of the bigger problems I had with the film. Right. Was just that it was it went from like, oh, you know, I don't want this case. Like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to take it. And he, and he sure. started as like a shit. And then, and then yeah. as soon as he starts taking the case, he's just like so staunchly like, oh, well, this is the American thing to do, and what, right. he's you know trying to find appeals for the case and really right. like representing the case like. As if it was anyone else besides some KGB spy, like right? No, yeah, and it, exactly. He went from zero to Atticus Finch. <laughs> zero, zero to one hundred. He zero to Atticus Finch real quick, <laughs> and then literally in his third formation <laughs> is he's just like all American man. He's like we got to bring all these Americans home. Yeah. you know, like he's he, he, like he goes from anti everything to like anti america kind of like pro america but anti anybody he's pro like said. what he thinks are american ideals mm-hmm. but he's technically against like the and, american people who right. you don't know, want to like burn this kgb spy and then he goes to germany and he's like we're bringing home every anybody who's a fucking american I mean, to, to yeah. summarize the film is kind of in like two halves there's mm-hmm. kind of like the courtroom half in the first half which is him defending this KGB spy, uh, right. Rudolf Abel, I think his name is. Mm-hmm. And then it turns out, you know, he there's a scene where he talks to the judge and he's like, you know, maybe we should not give him the death sentence because there may come a time where we want to trade this guy for another spy of ours that gets captured, you know, on the other side of the Cold War. And it turns out he's right. And there is this guy, Francis Powers, who gets captured on the other side of the Cold War. And because of that, he ends up being the guy who's decided to negotiate the exchange of these two spies and actually right. go to East or West Germany. I'm not actually sure which which side of the Berlin Wall he's on. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and it is. And, it's, and it all just seems... And I think uh, one of the biggest uh, things that made us want to review this film is, I mean, A, we've got a Steven Spielberg film with Tom Hanks. I mean, the last time we had that was Saving Private Ryan. Is it the last Steven Spielberg? I'm honestly not sure. It might have been like Catch Me As You, Catch Me If You Can, or something. Um, but I mean, I mean, let's, I mean, let's face it. Saving Private Ryan, great film. You know, it's Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg again, combining forces. Um, but it's really, I just. 
you know not a fan i'm 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 not a fan of this film oh and i mean i think i mean we were between reviewing this and like the martian or something Mm -hmm. and we're like oh but it's steven spielberg and it's tom hanks and oh it's like the coen brothers it's co-written by the coen brothers you know who we're obviously fans of but it, it just <clears throat> didn't seem like... It wasn't your typical Coen Brothers movie. Not I at guess all. That's the, the other writer is Matt Charman as the other build writer. And I, I think you could probably tell that it's probably more his movie. And maybe they were like, all right, Coen Brothers, come give us a few lines here and look over the script. Also, it, I, it does not have that typical right. like, Coen Brothers flair to it. Also, I think like if you're Steven Spielberg... And you're approaching the Coen Brothers. The Coen Brothers can't be like, well, maybe not. Like the Coen Brothers have to be like... Yo, you're what, Steven Spielberg. Whatever you want, sir. Whatever you want, Steve. Like, kind of like thing, you know. Mm. And I, th- that's definitely the impression that I got. Um, because again, it doesn't have a very. There is like a. Um... Ooh, nice. Ooh, cracking open a second Goose Island. Cracking on that goose. Um, Get loose on the goose. There's a. Um... I forget. What do you? What repeats in a film? Um, no. What <laughs> repeats in the film? <laughs> Damn it. Um, I'm lost. Uh, it was. Like a theme? Uh, yeah, like, like something that somebody says repetitively. <laughs> a motto? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's like, okay, okay, you know, like Abel, he's like, um, he's like, would it help? Like yeah, he, he says don't... that again and again. There's a term for that. There's a term for that, definitely. It's fucking said in like less than three. Um, the <laughs> like like the. <sighs> I can I have no idea what you're talking about. Motif. It's a motif. It's revisited in a film. The motif is like a theme, though. Like. But it's it's sort it's of not like necessarily a something... like a line that you're saying over and over again. That's okay, true. But go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're wrong, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> but I, th- I feel like that, like, would it help? Like, I feel like that's a part of, like, the Coen brothers kind of, like... Yeah, I think they were probably brought on for maybe, like, their, their more humorous aspects to the film. It was, it was humorous in certain ways, and, like, there were times I maybe didn't want to laugh as much as the audience was laughing. Oh, yeah, you... Okay, let's let's talk about... That's another that. thing, Let's yeah. talk like, about theater where, where, did, where, did, where did you see... Bridge See, of Spies. I how? saw this online. Okay. I illegally. Didn't... What? Illegally. Yes, illegally. Um, you, you didn't pay a cent to watch Bridge of Spies. Listen, I didn't, like... I MPAA, didn't... I hope you're listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to fucking pay to see this movie. Um, you know, even, like, I just said, like, oh, Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks. Like, I just wasn't interested in this movie, honestly. And I was like, you know, the, again, with the Coen brothers writing it and everything, mm. it just, it wasn't something that I wanted to pay a theater price to go see. So I looked it up online and I watched it online and it wasn't bad quality at all. It was, I mean, I got the whole like spiel kind of thing. Spielberg. I got the whole Spielberg. Spielberg. <laughs> um, and, you know, I watched it in my bed. I paused it when I wanted to talk to my girlfriend when she came home. <laughs> Um, that was it, really. It wasn't. It wasn't a bad. Experience. I paid. I paid full theater admission. Go, yeah. To watch it at the theater. Go, yeah. <laughs> Go, yeah. <laughs> Go, yeah. I I walked in and I I think it was like a seven ten showing and I showed up at like seven o'clock and there was literally nobody in the theater and I was like this is awesome like I'm gonna be literally the only person in the theater this could not be like a better theater experience so I sit literally like dead center in the like middle of the theater. Perfect, like, viewing. I'm so set, so stoked to watch this movie. And the Batman Killers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then James Holmes shows up. Ruins your perfect so day! <laughs> no. Apparently this is an old person's movie. Because, oh, like, definitely. with, like, five minutes oh, to go God. until the movie starts. Like, all these, like, old couples on, like, date night stuff. Oh, like, definitely. Shuffling in. Steven and, like, Spielberg, Tom Hanks. <laughs> I'm getting, like, an old boner already. <laughs> <laughs> but literally like there's something like all right so when i saw what was the movie we reviewed uh steve jobs when i saw steve jobs right. i was by myself when i saw that right 
And like, I think as, as someone in our generation, when you walk into a movie theater, if someone is in like the back left of the movie theater, you sit in the front left. Like you sit like as far away right. from other people as possible and you kind of just spread out across right. the movie theater. Yeah, yeah. I sat like dead center in the movie theater because there was no one there. This other old couple walks in like at like 7.05 for a 7.010 movie. Right. They sit literally like one seat away from me in a completely mm-hmm. empty theater. Ah. Like it was literally like they were like making like the most minimal effort to not be sitting right next to me in like dead center in a theater. All right. Then another couple walks in, sits literally one seat away from me. On the to other the right side. of me on the yeah. other side. Someone walks in, another couple sits dead behind me. Uh, then another couple walks in and sits like dead in front of me. And then some other people went to like the more like front rows, mm-hmm. but like whatever seating I had was like prime real estate in this theater and everyone else was trying to get like as close to that prime real estate as possible without like sitting on my lap to watch <laughs> Bridge of Spies. Which is, is, it's definitely something that like the older generation could only do. Like no one right. in our generation would ever walk into a theater where someone was the only person in the theater sitting dead center and sit anywhere near them. Right. You would sit as far away from possible, especially if it's just like one single guy who was the stereotype for like shooting in theaters <laughs> as I am as a white male at right. like 25 years old. Right. Like, yeah. So that was my theater experience was sitting alone thinking I was going to have like the most awesome viewing experience and getting claustrophobic right. with old couples on Thursday, like date night sitting around me. <laughs> at least old couples have the respect to kind of be quiet, I think, during these films. Were they quiet or...? They weren't talking, but it's, there's just, like, old people sounds. Like, like old people, like... <laughs> just old people sounds, there's, yeah. there's just a pain to being, like, over 35 years ah, old. It's just, like, actually yeah. audible, where just, like, with every movement, it's just like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm not yelling anymore. <laughs> ah, fuck, my body hurts. <laughs> this popcorn, I'm just going to eat it as loudly as possible because it's all that I have left. <laughs> So that was my experience, and that was the audience of Bridge of Spies, as yeah. I saw it, was I generally was... 40 and up. <laughs> wow, yeah. It was It was definitely, yeah, I mean, again, it was in theaters when I saw it, but I just, I, I wasn't I was unwilling feel... to pay I the American price. Did not want to pay to see this movie. Did, wasn't feeling well. Just wanted to be in my bed and watch this film. Had just... The same experience. I mean, I got to experience the same cinematography, which is just like America during the Cold War. It's a little foggy and it's a little like... And then, of course, Germany during the Cold War is just fucking grayscale. Like, it's just like... Like, yeah. it's like... It's it's like every... And that's what I didn't like about this film. It was just like every other film in the Cold War... It was just. I mean, it was also like I mean, I was I was trying to compare it to like other like Steven Spielberg films, right. and like I think of like you know War Horse. I mean, that's a couple decades earlier, but like War Horse was just so typically like, just even the way it was filmed was like upbeat and like studio, and like there was just nothing about War Horse that I could really attach to besides right it being the air bud of World War One. Yeah. Whereas this one, I I felt like I did appreciate that it was it was a little more. Indie's not the right term, but it was almost more artsy in the way that it was filmed. Right. And, like, they, they took certain risks that you wouldn't really expect from a film like that. Like, I think of the the one jump cut where they're they're talking about the atomic bomb. Mm. And then it, it jump cuts to, like, the the, stu- kids, the, the, yeah. the students in the classroom, like, It was watching, like Tom like, Hanks' the, kids, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which was, I don't know, I, th- I thought that was something that was not necessarily risky. There's not a huge risk involved, right. but it was, it was a little weird and kind of out there for... Bridge of Spies. I was not really expecting that, and I appreciated moves like that. Right, and I mean this this film. It turns into Tom Hanks' character. I mean, representing this uh, like KGB spy, and yeah, and again, it's it's like maybe we should keep this guy alive. And he talks to the judge, and he is kept alive. <clears throat> and then what do you know? Just like Tom Hanks fucking said. Uh, this Powers character gets shot down after he's uh, trying to take pictures with his U2 Hello, hello <laughs> Spy plane What a beautiful well, day <laughs> Aren't you better in a paradise <laughs> um, With his spy plane And uh, there's obviously some sort of trade agreement And Tom Hanks comes to 
uh, East or West Germany, whichever one <laughs> I'm still matters. Still not sure which side of the wall they're on. <laughs> um, but he's not just, he's just not here for powers. He's like, what? I also heard some sort of Yale student was also like... Friedrich something? Yeah, was also captured. And so this powers exchange just isn't enough for Tom Hanks. He's got to have both, and that causes him a whole line of shit. And, again, that's like the whole, like, just development, non-development of this it would It would have been better if he hadn't been painted, painted in the beginning as being so hesitant to, like, take this case... But right. then it's like, as soon as he takes it, he's so gung-ho. Like, not only am I going to, like, you know, defend this case and then, you know, seek an appeal, even after the case has already been ruled upon, try to get him not the death penalty, even though I know he's, like, already been found guilty and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And then when I get sent to, like, Germany, I'm going to, like, risk my fucking neck to, like, save this person. Right. And then also save another kid that, like, obviously, like, the CIA g- a agents don't want him to, like, save at that point. Right. Like, he's just so willing to go, like... Above and beyond, whereas in the beginning he's painted as, yeah, kind of this, like, scummy lawyer. He is. And then, like, hesitant to, like, take this case was, like, no one would, like, blame him for, because he, he, no, the he, viewpoint at the time was that, you know, this KGB agent should be sent to hang no matter what he did. Right. And, but then as soon yeah. as he takes it, he's just like, you know, you know, whatever I have to do, America, mm-hmm. I'm perfect in every way. And that was probably my biggest complaint, is that it was, not that it was ever meant to be a character study, but there was just, there was no flaws whatsoever with his character. Oh my gosh, yeah. And it, it, it is. It's it's like that first. I just I could have done without that. Fir- like we knew he was a lawyer when he walks into his practice and talks to his partners. I could have done without that first scene where he's like, "I'm an insurance lawyer. I'm a real shithead." Like kind of like thing. Like like he's really screwing this one guy over. It's like, dude, like these five guys on motorcycles are like really injured by like your one guy and he's like sorry that's how it works like you know like kind of although i do i do see because they do come back to that later when he's trying to negotiate because as he's trying to negotiate it's like the the soviet union has uh powers this american pilot that they want to trade for able right but then the other you know big focal point of the movie is east or west germany i'm still not sure which one it is wants to be recognized as a sovereign nation right because of that they have this you know student who really does not need to be held in captivity right like he did nothing wrong they're really just holding him so that they can negotiate and be recognized because of negotiations Mm -hmm. as a sovereign power friedrich whatever his name is this student right yeah not on the imdb for some reason Mm -hmm. um and that's kind of like the other big point in the movie is when he's basically trying to you know negotiate these two transactions at the same time and he kind of like calls back to that first conversation in the movie as that lawyer where he's like you know it's not really two separate conversation or you know transactions it's right. one transaction mm. we're giving you guys abel uh rudolph abel and you guys are giving us you know separately francis powers and this uh american student that was right in germany friedrich Mm -hmm. so i didn't mind the conversation once that point came up later in the movie where i was like all right i kind of appreciate that full circle thing coming around at that point i I still i still think it came with its own set of problems i think at least but it's got some problems there's some problems um yeah overall what is your opinion of the movie what are we gonna do? How many fingers? Are we, are we gonna we're gonna jump into all right? We're we gonna jump into a rating system right here, right, 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 right. Or, or do you, or you just want to hear my opinion? Yeah. Okay. So my opinion is that I was definitely disappointed, um, just because the Coen Brothers. And what, I mean, what were your ex- expectations going in? Here, Did you think it was gonna be a good movie? Here's or? the thing: Steven Spielberg directed this. Um, before this, he did um, again Lincoln. Which I really liked. I believe that was the last film that he's done. Mm-hmm. Before that, he did uh, War Horse, um, which I thought was a corny fucking Disney war movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> but even Lincoln, I, I was just kind of like, eh, you know, in in that that is where my whole joke about this sort of history dad um, originated from. But anyway, I, you know, Coen Brothers, love them. Follow them to the end of the earth. I think um, Inside Lewin Davis 
was genius. That's just the most recent thing that they've done. I think it was phenomenal. Uh, they know how to write a film. They had a part in writing this film, so I thought... They weren't really advertised as writers for this film at all, which leads me to think that it was probably this other guy. Right. What's his face? Uh, um, no, I, I don't know. I I actually heard it advertised as, like, the Coen brothers had a hand in writing I, this I literally film. didn't see that in any of that, because when I read that, I was like, oh, now I'm actually interested in right. this film. Whereas before, I was just like, okay, Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks again. Well, We've probably seen this movie before. <laughs> right, no, I, I definitely I definitely heard something about the Coen brothers. And I was, Matt Charman is the, the and other it, writer. And it made me want to And he's actually first build too. Oh, well, yeah, that, that makes sense. But no, it, it definitely um, was something that I was like, oh, uh, this is something more that I want to see. And it, it ultimately ended up just disappointing. Um, I think that... Um, I think uh, there's there's no real spoiler alert. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's a historical film, so right. I mean, obviously, um, James Donovan comes home alive, and he's just like, I just want to take a nap, <laughs> like, <laughs> and like he falls asleep on bed, on on the bed, and then he comes home, and he. And he just, he's like, oh, I gotta go to work now that I'm back from East West Germany, wherever the fuck I was. <laughs> and, like, the biggest thing was, I think the most, like, shocking part of the film is, like, oh, that prison that I was just in, there's people trying to escape that, and they were being shot by machine guns. Well, yeah, trying to climb over the, the right. Berlin Wall over there. Right. And then they have that, that point where... Um, Towards the end of the film, he's on the train and he's watching kids like climb, a climb over a fence. And, and the like, point is like, oh, in America, we don't shoot people for trying to climb over it is, fences. <laughs> that was another point in the film is that like I understand that the Soviet Union and everything that was happening in Germany at that time was super strict. But it just, again, it was like history, dad, where it was like, well... Even when America was wrong, they were still they right. Were <laughs> you know, they were like, better than the, yeah, the other option. <laughs> they were, yeah. So, and oh, that was the fucking other thing. Tom Hanks develops this relationship with the KGB spy. And, um, and he said, like, you know, we're going to, we're going to greet this, um, this, this other guy who comes back to us with open arms, no matter what. Mm -hmm. We love this guy. He's going to be portrayed as a hero. But he says, like, this is a completely different culture. I don't know how they're going to accept you. And he asks him, he says, like, you know, what do you think is going to happen when you go back? And he's probably like, and he's like, oh, I'm going to have a vodka. And mm -hmm. it's like, <laughs> Russian. Um, but then he's like, you know, like, um, they're either going to embrace me and they're going to throw me in the back seat of the car. Mm -hmm. And they do. They throw him in the back seat of the car Tom Hanks kind of has this like heartbreaking moment, and I, well, yeah, and they're they're kind of they're expressing in that moment at least. Right. They're like, all right, well, they're gonna kill this guy. Obviously. Not not they expect that he is you know divulge Russian secrets to the Americans in his captivity. Right, and because of that scene where he says, yeah, you know, if he, he's even saying like, you know, how do I know? That they're right. gonna like take care of you. He's like, well, they either embrace me or they, mm -hmm. you know, don't say a word and they throw me in the back of the car. Right. And that's what they do is they don't say a word and they throw me in the back of the car. So Tom Hanks right. or Tom Clanks, as we've affectionately <laughs> called him, Clanks, <laughs> is thinking like, oh god, like they're uh -huh. gonna fucking like blast this guy's fucking brains out. Right. And, and I think that was like a super realistic look at, you know, how the fucking Cold War was. You know, mm -hmm. everything. Um. And I thought that was just, like, a real, like, again, like, just how we went over in Steve Jobs, like, it doesn't have to be, like, a real, like, reflecting the real uh, events that happened, but, like, I think, like, again, that plays into all of the themes and events that play over with America, like, oh, we treat people like this over here in America, and that's how they treat people over there, and, like, I think that was, like, a really, like, you know, just hard lesson for Tom Hanks to be like, I did everything right. And they still put this guy in the backseat of the car. But then, literally a scene later, it's like, 
so and so yeah like the, went on to be yeah. a really cool guy like you know like it's just like oh, yeah fuck. they, they, they well, didn't, they didn't kill him at yeah. all yeah the other thing about that is when uh they're doing that you know kind of you know text over image thing right like, this is where they are now blah 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 they're talking about uh tom hanks's character james donovan and how he went on to negotiate the cuban the, missile crisis uh, missile yeah. crisis and all i could think of was like Bridge of Spies 2. You're right, yeah, <laughs> Bay yeah. of Spies, because he does the Bay of Pigs. <laughs> and, that, that, yeah, and that literally <laughs> circles around to this title. It's maybe... The working title that they just couldn't it was, ignore. It was, it was like a working title that kind of... I think the working title was actually the name of the town that they shot in or something. It was like, sent somethings something, mm-hmm. or whatever. But they ended up on Bridge of Spies, which I think of one of the worst movie titles they could think of for this film because it was just it was such a small part of the movie i mean yeah it's, it's the climax of the movie but it was like right it was maybe like 10 to 20 minutes of the movie was spent on this bridge they exchanged of, spies at the end the of the spies film are only on the, the bridge for maybe like on a bridge <laughs> and that's where the fucking name of the movie comes out but there, had, I, there had to be a better title in there somewhere oh if, God, they, if they had definitely. thought about it. It's like a one word, like real fucking strike you through the heart title. It it was there. It, they just didn't pick it. But what I want to do now is I want to show how yeah. many fingers are you show holding up? Fingers. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I feel like we haven't like talked too much overall, but. I, I did really enjoy this movie. I gotta okay. be honest. Like definitely. Even despite the weird theater experience of old people just crowding right, around yeah. me and uh, like hunkering over me like a moth to the flame. <laughs> I don't know, like I mean I again I hold it maybe I shouldn't hold it to a different standard because I feel like this probably is gonna be a big player in the Oscars, Oscars this yeah, year. I think so. It's definitely not like in my opinion a best picture oh no yeah winner i think it's a best picture nomination i think it was a pretty impressive film and the things that i have against it are kind of you know they're just kind of what the the history genre is in general like i right. it was once i you know ex- accepted that this is a history film by steven spielberg starring right. tom hanks it's pretty much exactly what I expected, and a little bit better too, because it did take some risks, like I pointed out earlier. Like right. in terms of the filming style, it reminded me of Saving Private Ryan in a lot of ways in the filming style too. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of like you know shaky camera angles and stuff like right. that. Obviously, there's not as much action as Saving Private Ryan. Uh-huh. But I don't know. I was engaged the entire way through it. I thought Tom Hanks. It wasn't his best performance. Right. There, was, there really wasn't any performances that I could point to as necessarily bad in it, mm-hmm. and there really wasn't anything that I hated about the movie oh, right in terms of fingers that right. i'm gonna stick up mm-hmm. on this bridge of spies mm-hmm. i want to go with four but I, I feel like four may be too high for it considering right. that it's probably going to be nominated for an oscar uh-huh. i think i have to hold it to a higher standard right i'm gonna have to go with three and a half fingers okay what are you feeling so I'm going to go with two and a half. Two and a half. Just two and a half. A whole point. Right down the middle. Just a whole, whole point lower than yours. Just King Solomon. Just slicing that baby right now. Right. And that's that's the thing is that it's an Oscar film. And I think it should be held accountable for that kind of thing. Accountable for its crimes. <laughs> uh, but honestly, this film really didn't. You know, it, obviously, it was a film that I could watch from start to finish. It was something that I could watch online, you know, and, and, I, ne- and I never got bored. But there was a lot of problems that I had with the film. Like, almost, like, the scene starts off with uh, um, Abel, the, the uh, KGB spy. Rudolph Abel, yeah. And it's, like, I don't fucking care about him, honestly. <laughs> It seems like a personal problem, man. It, well, it, it does, but it's it's Got also some empathy like problems. <laughs> here's the thing: Tom Hanks is the main character. Like, why are we following this guy who doesn't really talk, and you know he's he paints, which is which is a cool detail. But it's why start to film off like that, and why spend so much time on this guy? He's such well, a silent film is character. kind of about him too. Like, right? No, it, definitely. It's about but, how, yeah, you know. 
it's almost more about how he was kind of able not to manipulate but to you know befriend tom hanks and kind of you know draw this guy who is you know pro-american very right. american yeah to the to a fault where he's able you know willing to defend someone who is you know in our eyes very clearly just straight up a kgb spy like trying mm-hmm. to destroy us like right I, don't I, know. Just, I, I did not have a problem with with the opening i and that, i think that's part of the other thing is that I mean, what, what is this? Two hour, 141 minutes as a film. When I came out of it, I did not feel like I had sat through that long of a film. And it's not that I necessarily wanted to see more of it. Right. But I was just like, all right, that was like, I did not feel like I had sat through that long of a film. I was I, completely I, satisfied with the length. With, I think it says a lot for a, a film of, you know, like two hours and like 20 minutes, essentially. Right, and, and, and I can agree with that. It just wasn't my speed for a, a film. And I think I, I think I hold Steven Spielberg to a super high um, standard. Mm-hmm. And Tom Hanks, too, I hold to a super high standard. And it just seemed like kind of a side project sort of film where it's just kind of like, oh, but they were, you know, they this weren't is bad like, in it, though. Like, it wasn't no, no, like no, poorly not at directed, all. and no. Tom Hanks wasn't like a bad it, that, actor. It, that, that's why it's middle of the road for me. It's just kind well, of. I, I did the calculations, and your 2.5 and my 3.5 comes out to a 3. A 3. Three, three fingers. Th- I think that's a fair judgment for our podcast. So it's a third so date. <laughs> three fingers for Bridge of Spies. My name is Joe. I'm Mike. And this has been How Many Fingers Am I Holding Up? The three, podcast. three is the answer to how many fingers you're holding up. Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually a fact. Oh, no, that's the, you know, <laughs> in my opinion, three and a half fingers. Your opinion is two no. and a half. But um, yeah, yeah, I think ab- abruptly that's, signing out. <laughs> abruptly signing out. Uh, I think the most important part of this podcast is that Steven Spielberg is a dad who sits in front of the History Channel, half right. paying attention. And uh, this is and that the product the, of us. The uh, older couple said in front of me as we walked out of the theater that, uh-huh. that Tom Clanks can just <laughs> act in anything. <laughs> Tom Clanks! <laughs>